In this video, again, we're not going to be uh, actually looking at anything specific in terms of how to do something in Excel, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, charts in Excel, and we're going to look at some charts that were created in Excel, and uh, they're all good examples of how you should create charts. And you can pull up this website if you want to. This is the web address up here, and this won't take very long because there's not much to say about these. Every one is good. Um, this is a line chart and it has a descriptive title up here. It's easy to see what uh, is being described. Uh, it has a label on the vertical axis. It has a label down here on the horizontal axis. Uh, this one's probably unnecessary because you can probably figure out that those are years, um, but there's nothing wrong with putting a label down there. Um, I would rather put a label down there um, that's not needed than, than not put one down there. Uh, and have something be kind of ambiguous. Um, the chart's easy to read. Uh, we've got uh, legend over here and you can look at that and instantly you can see exactly what's going on. Good chart. Okay, now let's scroll down and here is another one. Um, this could have been done as a line chart as well because it does show how something changes over time but you can use a column chart as well. Uh, in Excel, a column chart is a bar chart where the bars go up and down. Uh, if the bars go horizontally, Excel calls that a bar chart. So uh, what I would normally call a bar chart, uh, Excel has divided up into two different categories. So this would be called a column chart. And again, it's got a clear title. Uh, it has a label on the vertical axis. It has a label on the horizontal axis. Uh, and it's very easy to read and in a second or two you can look at this and figure out exactly what's going on. And uh, we've got numbers over here uh, and the user put commas in which uh, is good. It makes it easy to read the numbers. If you got numbers that are a thousand or higher you should almost always put uh, commas in to make it easier to read. Okay, now let's scroll down a little bit further here. And here's a pie chart and uh, it's got a clear label. It has uh, both uh, numbers and percentages around the outside. Uh, it's not necessary uh, to put both, but Excel allows you to do it. Uh, it's got a label on each one. It's got the name of the player. Um, and you know they did not use a, a separate legend over here. They just put the, the names and the numbers around the outside of the pie so you don't have to jump back and forth. And there's one real important thing you should notice about this chart. And that is that this is for all of the Marlins. Now there's more than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players on a baseball team and most of them however have very small salaries. So uh, there's something like 25 players on a major league baseball team and so we've got seven of them here which means we've probably got like 18 or so uh, listed over here and um, that frequently happens with a pie chart. If you've got a whole bunch of really small pieces of the pie, you may want to uh, group them together and call them other or something like that. Um, this really needed to be included in order for this to be a valid pie chart. A pie chart is always used to show how 100% of something is uh, divided up. Uh, it's often used with budgets. You know, in this case, uh, this would be the salary budget for the team. And if we left that out, then basically we'd just be taking seven players that we kind of picked at random and making them into a pie chart. And that's basically 100% of nothing meaningful other than the seven players that you happen to choose. So um, you should always be describing 100% of something, uh, something reasonable, something logical. Okay. So uh, if this part had not been here, uh, this would not have been um, a good pie chart. Okay, here's another one, um, another good example, uh, clear title, labels around the outside. Uh, the only reason for putting this one in, um, in addition to this one, is just to show you that uh, Excel allows you to easily uh, explode pieces of the pie. Uh, here's another one, uh, another good example of a column chart, and it shows how um, the U.S. Olympic gold medals uh, the number of medals were won from 76 to 2000. Uh, we've got number of gold medals won by the USA. We've got a clear label over here. Uh, we've got a clear label down here, although again, this, anybody could probably figure that out. Uh, it's got a legend, uh, which you really need. If you've got multiple colors over here, you have to know what each one is. Um, about the only 
thing that I might change on this, uh, it says over here I might make the text a little bit larger. There's one other thing I might change here, and that would be to rotate this text 90 degrees so it's going sideways, uh, and it just makes a little more room for the chart. Uh, this takes up quite a bit of space here uh, horizontally. And uh, the default actually in Excel, uh, in the current version of Excel, is to uh, actually rotate that text 90 degrees and have it go up and down instead of horizontally. So those are some uh, examples of what your charts should look like. Um, and you know, a basic way to tell if, if you've done a chart correctly or not is to show it to somebody and ask them if they can understand what it's trying to convey. And if they can figure it out right away, then it's a good chart. And if they can't, then it's probably not a good chart.